the time we need to really keep on top of our cyber security. You might think there's other things to worry about at the moment, but it's partly because of that. There are nasty scams going around and we're here to try and help you stay safe. I've been speaking to Chris Greeny, who's the managing director at Templar Executives, a cyber solutions business, who's been giving me some top tips on how to stay safe online in these uncertain times. And when I spoke to him, he was giving one of his children a French lesson. So I asked him, first of all, about his thoughts at becoming a teacher all of a sudden. I've always had the utmost respect for teachers, uh, always. That's, that's the only answer I can put, I think, on this. Quite right, <laughs> quite right. Now, you, you run a, a cyber solutions business, and, and we're speaking to you because, and it's a horrible thing to say, when we expect and we want and we hope that everyone's going to pull together, that there are scams flying around at the moment, almost trying to make capital out of this. Yeah, sadly, I spent 30 years in policing as well, just to sort of caveat where I am now. And, and sadly, you know, criminals take advantage of any opportunity, especially this one. So although, you know, the majority of people in the country and the world are trying to do their very best to protect everyone, in the sort of nasty sidelines of the criminals seeking to take advantage, yeah. So what should people look out for? So I think there's a couple of things. So firstly, many people for the first time are now working from home. And also they're probably working outside their office network. So they're working on their home routers, or their home wireless networks, possibly on their own computer as well. And so therefore, there's a number of things they need to think about. And, and, and what I would say is, at a very basic level, make sure your laptop, your computer has antivirus installed. Make sure it's updated and make sure it's switched on as well. And secondly, if you're using a wireless router at home, make sure you've got the security password set uh, as opposed to admin or 1234. And if you can install a virtual private network, which is called a VPN, it makes the transmission of the signal between your laptop and your wireless router and the destination much more secure. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about was the, the fact that in some respects, maybe our guard is down because we're doing things differently. And I have to be honest with you, and, you know, we use... Technical, technological software for work. I do it for, for broadcasting programs outside of the office all the time. But something like Zoom, I never really, I, you know, I'd vaguely heard of for a few weeks ago, but I'd never considered using until a fortnight ago. And the way that we log into these Zoom meetings and exercise classes and all the rest of it is something that we have to treat in exactly the same way as we would have done before all this started. Uh, I think Zoom, Teams, they're all, they're all good platforms. They're all great communication platforms. And we should remember that's what they're there for, to communicate. Um, and as long as you use them safely, use a code like you do on Zoom, uh, Teams, you send an email and a link, and they're only a one-time only. So they're, they're pretty good systems for, for utilization. These are communication platforms as opposed to security platforms. So use them to communicate. And if you're just communicating day-to-day -day business, carry on and use it and make your business flourish and thrive by using them just off uh, topic for a moment it's also quite good to get your room tidy because everyone's going to be having a nose what's going on behind you and if uh, if the uninvited guests are cats and dogs that's probably all right as well because that's something i've seen quite a lot in the last couple of days <laughs> yeah i mean the, when the joy of the joy of video conferencing is the all the different sounds you get uh, when i've had i've uh, this week i've heard chickens uh, going off i've heard dogs barking i've heard radios kids screaming you get the whole monopoly of household sounds so yeah. what should we do to identify something that is a scam chris so i think the biggest risk currently to people working away from their office network is probably phishing emails now phishing emails spelled p-h-i-s um, are a form of email sent to people usually indiscriminately um, which persuades them to click on a link of some sort now the human brain has sort of two sort of big fields one is fear and one is uh, reward and phishing emails try and either make you scared of something to click on a link so they say you're in trouble click on the link to enter your details or they want to reward you saying you've got you know you've got a reward and click on the link now one of the risks currently in in the sort of position we're in globally is links purporting to be from government uh, which aren't so uh, I've seen a number of phishing emails already that say you know, get your COVID COVID-19 um, medicine and get your COVID-19 uh, grant from government and they look like .gov.uk website. So the key thing on these when you get these emails is to look at the header. Now the header is the email address basically where it's sent from and lots of them when you look at them rather than being www.gov.uk they're .gruv or .gov and not quite spelled right. And if we see something like this do we just bin it and, and forget about it or should we do it, something else? <laughs> 
there's not much you can do with it really if you're working from home. So in companies you have fish me buttons that send them to the security centre and things like that. But if you get emails like that, the best thing is just delete them. Brilliant information. And uh, I guess the other thing to, to ask about is just is people's concern. You've touched on this already. If people are, you know, you've given us practical advice. But what about if people are worried? Is there is there any practical steps they can do to to ease their anxiety about it? You know, to make themselves more secure? Yeah, there's some great websites to go to. So I'd always recommend the National Cyber Security Centre's website, NCSC. Um, which is part of GCHQ and provides the cybersecurity for the UK from the state level. Loads of great tips and tricks on there, very nice infographics, um, which will reassure you reassure you, and let you know how to work safely. Also, Action Fraud, which is run by the City of London Police, and also the Temporary Executives website, which has to has some very easy how-to guides as well. It's been great to talk to you this morning. Thank you so much, Chris, and, and or should I say, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Back off to do the French lessons for his kids. That's Chris Greeny, the Managing Director at Templar Executives, who are a cyber solutions business.